Hello uh, and welcome. In this video we're going to look at how to solve a problem that crops up from time to time, uh, particularly for landscape photographers. Now if you've ever taken a shot that looks great, you might often find that ooh, on closer examination it looks great apart from part of the sky area which has actually gone way too bright and all those lovely clouds that you've seen, the detail in them is lost. So if you've ever experienced that, let's have a look to see how neutral density graduated filters, a bit of a mouthful, so ND grads for short, let's look at how they help us overcome that problem as we're shooting out in the field. Um, we can solve it without taking multiple shots or trying to rectify things in processing after. So quite an elegant way to uh, sort that problem out there and then. Well, let's take a look at what ND grads are. As you can see, this one is uh, rectangular in shape. Uh, it's made of toughened glass. Uh, some filters are made of uh, more standard glass or uh, a plastic resin, um, but all essentially do the same type of thing. So just a bit of disclosure, um, the filters that I use are from Case. Uh, with whom I'm a pro partner. Now they're a very high quality product um, and if you start to get more serious about your photography then I'd definitely say uh, maybe consider investing in uh, some quality filters like these. So as you can see part of the filter is dark and part is light. So a simple way to think about this is as a pair of sunglasses that are just able to cover up the bright bits of the scene. Now, this number here will tell you what the strength of the filter is or how much light the dark part is holding back. So they come in different strengths because you're going to be tackling different levels of contrasts in different scenarios. So by having a range of filters, you're able to match uh, the strength to the situation that you find. As well as different strengths, there is also different styles of ND grad which suit different scenes. Um, but I'll probably cover that in a, I think, a masterclass video later on. Okay, so why use them? Well, when we're looking at a scene, uh, the human eye and the brain is frankly pretty amazing. Um, we're able to see bright parts of the scene and dark parts of the scene kind of concurrently without struggling to see the detail within them or certainly that's how we perceive it as we're scanning a scene. Now even though technology is frankly unbelievable today it's still not quite as sophisticated as our human biology and sometimes a scene will have a contrast between light parts and dark parts that actually goes beyond what our digital uh, camera sensors able to capture in one uh, exposure. So what does that actually mean in practice? Well, for example, if you take a shot where you've included foreground interest, you might find that your exposure has uh, nicely captured the details in the foreground area. So maybe you've got a bit of a tree uh, in the foreground or a rock or some grasses. So you've captured the details nicely in that, but when you actually look at the bright part of the scene, which is usually the sky, that's actually become blown out. Or in other words, it's so bright that no real detail has actually been captured in that part of the image. It's just gone pure white. Now, alternately, you might find that the sky looks absolutely perfect and you've got all the nice detail in the clouds. But when you then look at your foreground interest, it's actually gone pretty much to black. So we've lost the details there. To make it into my camera bag, every filter that I carry needs to solve a problem. And one approach to solving the problem that I've just described is by using ND grads. So they'll enable you to balance out the range of contrasts in a scene. Or in other words, you're going to get a good exposure across the whole part of that image, capturing both detail in the sky and at the same time capturing that detail in the foreground.
Okay, let's think about how to use them then. The first thing that I'd recommend is that you review your image and make a determination about whether or not you really need to use uh, an ND grad. So if you've looked at your picture and it suffers from that blown out sky or there's lack of detail in uh, shadow areas potentially, you know, that might be when we're going to use that ND grad. Now, it's important that you use a histogram when making that judgment. So I'll cover the histogram in another video, but what that will enable you to do is really check and see whether or not there's uh, an issue. Now, if you look at the image on the back of the screen, that's not going to give you a definitive idea of whether there's a, a blown out highlight or a lack of detail in shadow area. We really need to look at the histogram to know. Let's assume though that the histogram is showing that the amount of contrast in the scene is too much for your particular camera to manage. At that point, let's get the filters out. Okay, so I wanna talk you through one uh, uh, simple and effective way of using ND grad filters to its full effect. So first things first, get your camera on a tripod. Um, if we're gonna be using these ND grads, it's really not a handheld thing. Get your camera on the tripod and sort your composition out. Composition is king, get that nailed in first and foremost. Okay, let's get your camera set to uh, matrix metering or evaluative metering as it's known on some cameras. I like to shoot in aperture priority mode, uh, which is what I shoot for the majority of shots that I take. So I've set the camera in aperture priority mode. I then select the aperture that I want, and then I make a mental note of the exposure reading. So what aperture value have I got? What is the ISO that my camera is set to? And then what is the shutter speed that the camera has selected? So I've got three things there that I need to remember. Now what I do next, and there's different ways of doing this, so it's just one approach. But what I do next is then switch over into manual mode. I then dial in those same settings. Uh, I dial in the aperture. I make sure that the ISO is the same. And I then set the shutter speed. So you might be asking, Rod, why do you do it that way? And that's a good question. Now, the reason is that when it comes to putting a filter in front of the lens, if we were in aperture mode or even shutter mode, once we place that filter in front of the lens, the camera's actually gonna think, oh, something's gone on here, it's gone a bit darker. I need to readjust this exposure. Um, so what you'll do, you've darkened the scene and the camera then tries to brighten it back up again. So we could be in a situation where we're actually fighting against the camera so by dialing in these settings manually, when we place our filter in front of the camera, the camera's set, it's not gonna change. The consequence of not doing that is that we're not gonna get the full effect of the filter. So it's a little bit of a extra step in the process, but for me, it's something that's worth taking into um, consideration. Because what we're saying really is that we want the filter to modify the light coming in from this point onwards. What we're not trying to do is get the camera to make adjustments. So we've got the so uh, shot set up, we've got our exposure dialed in, and then with our ND grad, we're gonna modify the way that that light comes into the camera. We slide the filter into place, and what we're looking to do here is align it in a way that the dark part of the filter covers the bright part of the scene and the clear or the light part of the filter is in position to cover the darker areas of the scene. Something we can also do on this setup is twist the filter in order to match the angle of the skyline in the scene because it won't always be horizontal, uh, particularly if you're in, you know, somewhere hilly, Lake District, Snowdonia, the Highlands. 
Okay, so at this point you might be thinking, well, how do I know what strength of filter do I need to use? Um, if you're new to filters or you haven't used them a lot, then, you know, at this stage, maybe try and keep things simple. So a rough rule of thumb measure might be useful for you. If you found that your camera's not quite managed to contain the full range of tonality in the scene, there's just a little bit of uh, contrast gone over what it's able to manage, then go through the 0.3 ND filter. If you think there's quite a noticeable difference in contrast, so the sky's fairly bright and the foreground's fairly dark, go for the 0.6 ND filter first of all. If there's a very noticeable difference, then reach for the 0.9 uh, ND filter. So once you've made that initial uh, judgment about which strength filter you want, take a shot and go back to your review screen and see has that resolved the problem. Or um, if it hasn't, maybe you need to use a darker filter. If it's gone uh, and made the sky too dark, perhaps use a less strong filter. What you might find is that it's still not resolved the problem even though you'd put your strongest filter in there. So at that point, what we might look to do is actually combine them or stack the filters in order to get a stronger overall effect. But rule of thumb, make a rough guess, take a shot, review the image and then change the filter strength as necessary. I'm going to produce some uh, masterclass videos on filters where I really talk about them in uh, depth. So keep an eye out for that uh, in the near future. So in conclusion, uh, ND grads essentially help us to prevent part of our image from appearing too bright or too dark. They give us what we describe as a balanced overall exposure. Now there are other strategies for overcoming this problem but I like using ND grads when I'm out in the field. Uh, personally I find them to be quite an elegant way to overcome those problems and to get the shots that I want. I've done separate videos that cover the other main filter groups uh, and they've also got the step-by-step -step instructions on how to use them. Um, if that sounds useful, you can find uh, details in the link uh, and description below. Um, but I hope you found that overview of ND Grad filters useful. Um, if you've got any questions or thoughts, just pop them into the comments. Um, and consider subscribing if you'd like to keep up to date with more photography uh, tips videos. Okay, all that's left is for you to get out there and take pictures. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.